this is Rue. Welcome to the Slash Gear Weekly Roundup. We're going to kick off with a quick recap of the week's Sony PlayStation Network news. The network was hacked two weeks ago and the situation is not getting any better. Early on Monday, things seemed to be clearing up with Sony announcing that parts of their network would be back online this week. They even offered a compensation package including 30 days free membership to PlayStation Plus and free game downloads. But shortly following that, we find out that their other gaming network, Sony Online Entertainment, also got hacked, with the credit card data of over 20 million members possibly compromised. Sure enough, Congress wanted some answers, but Sony opted out from the congressional hearing. Instead, they responded via a letter to the House of Representatives in which Sony blamed the hacker group Anonymous for the attack. This then sparked a response from Anonymous denying their involvement, followed by claims that it's highly possible a separate faction of the group could have been responsible. Either way, Sony can't shift all the blame because a data security expert testified in front of Congress saying that the company knew it had outdated Apache web servers and didn't have proper firewalls. Sony then further expanded their apology package to include free identity theft protection for their members. But on Friday, there were reports that another possible attack on Sony may occur this weekend. And so the network is still down. All right, let's move on to that other big topic that's gotten Congress involved, Apple's location tracking. Not too much developed on that issue this week, except that Apple updated their iOS to 4.3.3 for their AT&T iPhone and 4.2.8 for their Verizon iPhone that fixed most of the location tracking concerns. The updates reduced the data cache to only save up to one week's worth of location data. They stopped the data from being backed up to iTunes, and you can wipe out the data when you turn off location services. They also promised that the data cache would be encrypted in the future iOS 5 update. Other Apple news this week include the iPad 2 being launched in Asia and rapidly selling out. They were out in less than a week in most places, including South Korea, Singapore, and Hong Kong. And in China, they were sold out in less than a day, with the first stock out reached within four hours after store opening. The iPad 2 shortage may be due to a production problem with LG. LG supplies a portion of Apple's LCD IPS displays, but it was reported that their displays have a problem with light leakage. LG says it has addressed the issue and shipments should return to normal in the second quarter. The rumors of an iMac refresh were correct this week. The new iMac hasn't changed any outside appearance, but now sports Intel's Sandy Bridge processors as well as the new Thunderbolt connector port. Speaking of Intel, they made their most significant technology announcement of the year this past Wednesday. And it was their new Ivy Bridge 22 nanometer 3D Trigate transistor technology. The new production process makes for chips that are up to 37% faster and up to 50% more energy efficient than the already awesome 32 nanometer Sandy Bridge chips. BlackBerry World Conference took place this week in Orlando, Florida, and they unveiled their two latest smartphones, the BlackBerry Bold 9900 and the 9930. They are the thinnest BlackBerry smartphones to date and have 2.8 inch capacitive touchscreens with full QWERTY keyboards, optical trackpads, and five megapixel cameras. And they will be running on the new BlackBerry OS 7, which will bring several enhancements, including improved browser, voice activated search, and support for HTML5 videos. But the new OS 7 will not be available to existing BlackBerry handsets. Also surprising was their announcement that Microsoft Bing is now the default search for the BlackBerry OS. Now as for the BlackBerry Playbook, RIM has confirmed that it will be getting video chat and Facebook apps later this month. They also demonstrated Android apps running on the Playbook for the very first time. And there were some rumors about there possibly being a 10-inch version of the Playbook coming in time for the holidays, as well as a keyboard accessory for the tablet. The Asus ePad Transformer, most well known for its keyboard dock, has been experiencing a major supply shortage. Originally, it was rumored that Asus was short on components, but the company explained it was actually the unexpected demand. Make sure to check out our full review for the Asus ePad Transformer and its official sleeve case on SlashGear.com. Samsung held an event this week to launch the Infuse 4G smartphone for AT&T. It sports a 4.5 inch Super AMOLED Plus touchscreen, which is the largest of any Samsung smartphone, but it still manages to be the thinnest smartphone in AT&T's lineup. It has a 1.2 gigahertz processor, 8 megapixel back camera, and 1.3 megapixel front camera. It comes running Android 2.2 and will have the TouchWiz interface. However, it's being hailed as AT&T's first phone to support HSPA Plus and HSUPA at launch. 
So it's AT&T's first real 4G phone? Folks have been frustrated and even angry with AT&T's 4G marketing. It seems the term has been extremely downgraded. 4G was originally defined as a theoretical throughput peak of 100 megabits per second downstream, such as with the LTE and WiMAX network, but the marketing battle between AT&T and T-Mobile have dragged it down to mean HSPA+, Plus, which is just an evolved version of their current HSPA or 3G network. Now they're defining 4G as anything with a downlink speed of 14.4 megabits per second, which is HSPA or 3G speed, as long as it has a fast or enhanced backhaul. And that's their reasoning for why the HTC Inspire, the Motorola Atrix, and the recent HP Veer all get the 4G labeling even though they max out at 3G speeds. All right, that wraps it up this week. Make sure to check out our review of the Droid Charge and also our various featured editorials, which I've listed for you below. Thanks so much for watching. This is Rue with Slash Gear. We'll see you next time.